Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Senior diplomats from the United States, Britain, China, France, Germany and Russia are gathering today in Germany to discuss Iran's nuclear ambitions. The previously scheduled talks come a day after Tehran announced it's launched its first domestically made satellite. The White House responded to Iran's satellite launch by describing it as a, quote, matter of acute concern and adding it would deal with Iran using, quote, all elements of our national power. The comments were made by White House Press Secretary Robert Gibbs a Tuesday briefing. Efforts to develop uh, missile delivery capability, uh, efforts that continue on an illicit nuclear program, uh, or threats that Iran makes toward Israel uh, and its sponsorship of terror uh, are of uh, acute concern to this administration. Um, the president is, is clear uh, that he wants Iran to be a responsible member of the world community. Uh, again, I would underscore the responsible, that with that goes uh, responsibilities. The actions, um, this action does not convince um, us that Iran is acting responsibly uh, to advance stability or security in the region. Um, uh, all of this continues to underscore that uh, our administration will use all elements of our national power um, uh, to deal with Iran. Uh, and to help it be uh, a responsible member of the international community. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton also expressed concern over developments in Iran Tuesday. Well, we are um, obviously concerned about uh, Iranian behavior on a very broad base. It's uh, uh, not uh, limited to any one event or activity. And uh, as uh, you know, we're undergoing a uh, comprehensive uh, review of how best to approach uh, Iran and how to uh, uh, influence uh, its behavior going forward. At an earlier news briefing with the British Foreign Secretary, Clinton discussed Iran's opportunity to, quote, step up and become a productive member of the international community. As President Obama said, uh, we are reaching out a hand, but the fist has to unclench. And we will uh, see how we proceed uh, uh, together uh, toward uh, a policy uh, that we believe uh, represents uh, the uh, objectives that we share vis-a-vis uh, -vis Iran. Clinton's words echoed President Obama's message to Iran in his interview last week with the Arabic language channel Al Arabiya. The Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad responded to Obama's offer during a speech at a rally in Tehran last week. He called for, quote, fundamental change in U.S. policy to Iran. Those who say they want to create change, this is the change. They should apologize to the Iranian nation and try to make up for their dark past and all the crimes they have committed. We welcome change, but on the condition that change is fundamental and is on the right track. I'm joined right now in Washington, D.C., by a former State Department official who is one of a small number of American diplomats authorized to negotiate with Iran from 2001 to 2003. Hillary Mann Leverett's the former director of Iran and Afghanistan Affairs at the National Security Council. She's now the CEO of a political risk consultancy called, well, Hillary, you can help me, Strategia, and writes frequently about how the United States should approach Iran. One of her best-known pieces, co-written with her husband, Flint Leverett, is called Called the Grand Bargain. It appeared in the Washington Monthly and the New America Foundation website last October. Uh, Hillary Mann Leverett, welcome to Mark's Now. How do you pronounce your company? Stratega. Stratega. Um, the Grand Bargain, what is it, and can you respond to the launch, uh, Iran says, of a domestic satellite? Yeah, let me take the, the domestic satellite uh, piece first. I think, you know, anytime Iran. Uh, takes a step toward uh, possibly promoting a, an unconventional weapons program, whether it's for research or otherwise, has to be of concern to countries that don't have um, a diplomatic or otherwise good uh, relationship with Iran. So, of course, we're going to be concerned about that. I think, however, we need to learn, particularly from recent history, the past, um, you know, five to, to seven years, eight years, that we need to, to really look hard at, um, at what is going on, what is the evidence um, for any kind of uh, program that could require 
some sort of coercive response, particularly from us. Um, for example, just on the, the, the space launch, in August, Iran also claimed to have launched a space satellite. And then a couple of weeks later, we determined that that was a fake. And so here we are at the 30th anniversary of the revolution, where there's a lot of incentive um, in Iran to try to do something to mark the revolution. And we need to really question whether this was an actual launch, launch and what it really means for the pl proliferation capabilities of the Islamic Republic. And how do you so determine it, by the way, whether it's a fake or not? Well, there are a lot of there are a lot of ways that the intelligence agencies here and in other countries can look at um, footage. The Iranians actually, you know, put everything on live television, or they try to put it onto a, you know a website to show that they've they've done the launch to prove uh, to themselves to, to Iranians inside, in particular, that they've taken this step. So there there's a lot of things that you can look at. We also have a you know, variety of kind of capabilities to, to understand what goes on inside Iran, but it's not perfect. And that's why I caution that even if there's been an announcement, you know, we certainly saw Saddam Hussein frequently talk about his various uh, unconventional weapons programs, and that didn't turn out to be the case. So we need to be really cautious here, particularly in light of the August determination that, um, that the launch wasn't, you know, didn't really have the, was, was not true. It was a fake. That was the determination here. So we need to be really careful. And the second part of what you were saying. The second part, I think, comes down, come, comes from this issue of the of the space launch and our our concern about it here and our allies' concern about Iran's potential uh, proliferation capabilities. For me, the way I see it, the fundamental question is how do we view Iran today, 30 years after the, uh, the, the revolution that brought us the Islamic Republic? Your, your interview with Shireen Abadi was very, very interesting and I think important. 30 years later, Iran is no longer really an immature revolutionary movement.